Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So previously I have made a video on glycolysis like you no know, very detailed uh, lecture on glycolysis. So it is there, avail it is available in YouTube. So the link for that is appearing in the upper right corner uh, right now. So in this video, I will be explaining you regulation of uh, glycolysis. So how the glycolysis is uh, regulated, what all the enzymes that are involved in the regulation of glycolysis. So I'm going to touch upon that particular concept. So very briefly and to the point, so, so that uh, you get all the points that you need uh, to understand the regulation of glycolysis and also for the exam point of view. So uh, let's get into uh, glycolysis here. So, so there are a few enzymes that are regulated in glycolysis. So I have uh, uh, written here so all the glycolytic reactions. So just let me quickly go over uh, these reactions. And also I recommend you to go over my uh, glycolysis video first so that you understand all the regulations in glycolysis. And then we you come down to uh, regulation of glycolysis that way it will help you to better understand this concept. So if you have already went through the regulation uh, sorry glycolytic reactions and you are thorough about that. So you can continue watching this video also which will help you to understand better. Now the glucose broken down into means oxidized into glucose 6-phosphate and then fructose 6-phosphate which is a reversible reaction there. Fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate uh, which is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and then 3-phosphoglycerate, uh, 2-phosphoglycerate uh, and then it will be converted into phosphoenol pyruvate. So uh, basically there are two, uh, three arrows in fact here. So phosphoenol pyruvate. Now uh, phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate and pyruvate can go into lactate side or if it is an anaerobic, anaerobic situation there or if the cell do not have mitochondria, pyruvate will go into lactate. So of course in that particular reaction, so NAD, NAD basically NADH will plus H plus enters into the reaction and will uh, regenerate NAD plus. That is the reason why uh, pyruvate will go into lactate catalyzed by lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. The reason for that is it has to regenerate this NAD plus because to continue glycolysis you need NAD plus at um, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase uh, step which is present here. Anyways, if the cell has got mitochondria and sufficient oxygen, so pyruvate will enter into the mitochondria by pyruvate transporter and in the mitochondria pyruvate is converted into means it is oxidized into acetyl CoA molecule. So now let us uh, jump into what all the regulatory enzymes in uh, glycolysis. So the very first regulatory enzyme in glycolysis is a very first reaction that is uh, uh, glucokinase exokinase reaction. So glucokinase, glucokinase enzyme or hexokinase enzyme, hexokinase, glucokinase or exokinase reaction. So it all depends on where the glycolysis is going on. If the glycolysis is going on in the hepatocytes, so the enzyme is glucokinase. If the glycolysis is going on in the peripheral tissues, the enzyme is hexokinase. Now, how the regulation happens? So whenever person is in a fed condition, so under fed condition when the insulin is more, especially in the hepatocytes, so insulin, so insulin will uh, induce it will induce glucokinase enzyme. So, I will write indu induction like this upward running arrow in the circle. So, induction. So, I am writing like this upward running arrow in the circle. That is the induction. So, insulin induces glucokinase in the hepatocytes. Whereas, in the peripheral tissues, so the in, uh, hexokinase enzyme, so it will have a, it will be feedback inhibited by its end product that is uh, glucose 6-phosphate. So, the glucose 6-phosphate will have a negative effect or feedback negative effect on hexokinase enzyme that happens in the peripheral tissue uh, in the peripheral tissue. So, that is how the exokinase is regulated. So, note that exokinase is not induced by insulin. So, it is only feedback inhibited by uh, glucose 6-phosphate enzyme. So, that is about regulation and the first step. 
Now let's move on to see the enzyme that is uh, next enzyme that is regulated in the glycolysis and that is phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. So phosphofructokinase and number 1 phosphofructokinase enzyme. So phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme is the most regulated enzyme in glycolysis and also this is the uh, rate limiting enzyme in the glycolysis. Make sure you remember this phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme the it is the regulated most regulated enzyme and also the rate limiting enzyme or rate determining enzyme of glycolysis. Now what are the uh, molecules that will positively uh, activate or say act as a positive modulator on phosphofructokinase 1 or the negative modulator on phosphofructokinase 1. So the first let me explain the negative modulator. So whenever we have uh, plenty of ATPs, so ATP will have a negative effect on phosphofructokinase 1. So it makes sense here because when the cell has got sufficient ATP, so there is no need to break or oxidize glucose in a faster way. So ATP acts as a negative allosteric modulator and kind of it slows down the glycolysis by having a negative effect on phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. Similarly, we have uh, citrate, citrate in the cytoplasm which is coming out of mitochondria whenever we are in fed condition, citrate moves out of mitochondria into the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm citrate will have a negative effect on phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. So these are two negative modulators on PFK1 enzyme, phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. Now let us move on to see the positive modulator and also note that all these negative modulators ATP and citrate. This negative modulation happens on the peripheral tissues except in the hepatocytes. So hepatocytes, the ATP and citrate generally do not have any effect on phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. Now the AMP, adenosine monophosphate, so it is a energy hunger signal for the cell. So whenever there is excess adenosine monophosphate in the peripheral tissues, so it will have a positive effect on phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme thereby so it will increase the pace of glycolysis. So AMP acts positively on phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. Now the, uh, so this, this is in the peripheral tissues. So in the hepatocytes what happens is it all depends on the concentration of a molecule called fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. I will just write it as BP here, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Now this fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, it is a positive modulator on uh, PFK1 enzyme. So it is a positive modulator just like AMP but only thing is uh, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is a positive modulator in the hepatocytes. So in the hepatocyte, it all depends on the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So the insulin will uh, act on an enzyme called PFK2, phosphofructokinase uh, 2 enzyme and increases the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate thereby fructose 2,6-bisphosphate will have a positive effect on uh, phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme and thereby uh, glycolysis will increase. That is how insulin by increasing fructose 2,6-bisphosphate will make sure PFK1 enzyme is most active. What glucagon does under fasting condition? Glucagon what it does, it is going to act on PFK2 enzyme, uh, decreases the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, thereby it is going to take away the positive effect of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate on PFK1 enzyme. So I have a video on uh, like you know, in, in detail explaining how exactly insulin and glucagon will act on PFK1. So please watch that video. So the link for that video is appearing in the upper right corner right now. So please watch that video if you have any doubt there. So it is important you need to understand uh, how fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate concentration will be regulated under fed condition and fasting condition thereby uh, PFK1 activity can be altered. Anyway, so this is how uh, phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme is regulated. This is the most regulated enzyme as I said before. Now let us move on to see our next enzyme. Our next enzyme that is regulated is uh, pyruvate kinase enzyme. Now the pyruvate kinase enzyme is one of the regulated enzyme in glycolysis. Again, whenever we have uh, sufficient ATPs, adenosine triphosphates, 
So obviously adenosine triphosphate will have a negative effect on uh, pyruvate kinase enzyme. And whenever there is accumulation of or increase in the concentration of um, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, so this molecule fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, whenever we have increase in concentration of fructose 1,6-BP and this fructose 1,6-BP will have a positive effect on pyruvate kinase enzyme. This type of effect we call it as a feed forward activation because the a molecule which is way behind uh, of this enzyme pyruvate kinase. So, the fructose 1, 6 upward in the basically in the upper reaction fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate will have a positive effect on a downstream enzyme that is pyruvate kinase. So, that is what is called as feed forward activation. So, remember that point. This is how pyruvate kinase is uh, regulated there. Now, it all depends on whether the condition is uh, anaerobic or aerobic. If the condition is anaerobic, pyruvate will go into lactate by lactate dehydrogenase and the NADHH plus which is produced in the glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase is oxidized into NAD plus that is how pyruvate is reduced to lactate and why this happens? Because this NAD plus has to come back here to glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase thereby uh, uh, glycolysis is continued. So, that is the reason. So, this NADHH plus has to come down here to glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase reaction thereby glycolysis can be continued. Anyway, so now let us move on to see uh, what will happen to pyruvate if the cell has mitochondria. So, when the cell has mitochondria, so pyruvate enters into the mitochondria and it will be converted to uh, acetyl CoA and that will be done by enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, pyruvate dehydrogenase, dehydrogenase complex. It is a complex enzyme. It has E1, E2, E3 subunits. I have a video on that uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex enzyme. So, please watch that video. The link for that video is appearing uh, uh, in the upper right corner right now and also I have given all the links in the description. Now, let us uh, jump into what are the positive and negative modulators on pyruvate uh, dehydrogenase enzyme complex. So, whenever we have uh, excess ADP, ADP will have a positive effect and also whenever we have calcium, so calcium will have a positive effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and uh, uh, excess acetyl CoA which is a product of pyruvate dehydrogenase. So, acetyl CoA, excess acetyl CoA will have a negative effect and also whenever there is accumulation of NADH plus H plus, so this NADH will also have a negative effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. Again, I have a video on uh, regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. It is uh, regulation a little bit complicated. So, please watch that video to get more details. What I have explained here is very simple one. But uh, otherwise, uh, regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is little more complicated. So, to get more details, please watch that video. Link for that is appearing in the upper right corner right now. And also, it is I have given the link in the description below. So, kindly watch that. So, this is all about uh, regulation of glycolysis. So, let us uh, quickly look at the enzymes that are uh, regulated in the glycolysis. So, enzymes that are regulated in glycolysis are phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme. So, it is the most regulated enzyme in the glycolysis. So, uh, ATP will act negatively on uh, PFK1 enzyme. Citrate will have negative effect on PFK1 enzyme, ATP and citrate. And um, uh, AMP is a positive modulator on PFK1 enzyme. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is a positive modulator. Okay. Now, the glucokinase. So, the glucokinase enzyme in the hepatocyte is induced by insulin. Insulin induces this enzyme and uh, hexokinase in the peripheral tissue, it is in uh, feedback inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate, its end product glucose 6-phosphate, feedback inhibition there. Now, pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase is uh, inhibited by ATP, excess ATPs will inhibit pyruvate uh, kinase enzyme and uh, pyruvate kinase is feed forward activated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate that is feed forward activation. 
Coming to pyruvate dehydrogenase, so pyruvate dehydrogenase is inhibited by acetyl CoA, its end product acetyl CoA. It is inhibited by NADH plus H plus. So, all these are negative modulators, uh, not inhibition. So, please uh, correct my uh, terminology here. Instead of inhibition, let us say it as negative allosteric modulation because these are all our own um, biomolecules, metabolic intermediates. All they do is they act positively or negatively. They are allosteric modulators. So, I am sorry about that. So, it do not uh, use the word inhibitor because these are not uh, uh, chemicals which are coming out of our body. It is our own uh, metabolic intermediates. Anyway, so pyruvate dehydrogenase, uh, acetyl CoA negative modulator, NADHH plus negative modulator, and ADP is a positive modulator, and uh, calcium uh, is also positive modulator on pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, enzyme complex. Okay. So, these are the enzymes that are regulated in a glycolysis. So, that is all about uh, glycolysis regulation. So, I hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, regulation of glycolysis. If you have any questions, so do not hesitate to leave that in the comment section below. If you like the video, give uh, please give thumbs up and like the video and also if you would like to put uh, no appreciation note or something. So, you are most welcome to do that. So, thank, thanks again and I uh, will see you in my next video. Till then, take care.